All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode. Welcome to another episode of the Bottom Line Podcast, where we say what we mean and we mean what we say, because at the core of everything that is, was, and forever will be, there will always be the bottom line. Today's guest, I got a twofer for you today. Got two good guys. Big shout out to David and Jemmy uh, for setting this up and making this introduction, right, over at National Title Agency. Got uh, Tyler Ardron which is the founder and uh, VP over at uh, Risk Reduction. And I've got Ryan Harbinson also, which is the uh, director of BizDev over at ClearBridge Branding Agency, also out in New Jersey. Both agencies are out in New Jersey. Now, Tyler here is an insurance broker. We're going to talk a little bit about risk reduction, what that is, what he does, and how we, he uses marketing, and just you know his personality, his relationship building skills to do more of what he does because he is an entrepreneur and a business owner, right? And um, Ryan here, director of BizDev. BizDev is huge. It's the lifeline to any entrepreneur business, to any entrepreneur's lifestyle. And when I say lifestyle, when you become an entrepreneur, <laughs> that is your life, right? Yeah. So BizDev is huge, right? Uh, so Tyler, Ardren, and Ryan Harbinson, welcome to the show. Thanks for taking the time. This is going to be a lot of fun. I'm just going to call you guys Tyler and Ryan. Again, Love thanks it. for taking the time. Welcome to the bottom line, man. How are things going? Thanks, man. Appreciate the opportunity. It's good. Yeah, man. Super excited. Thanks for having us both. You guys have your ultimate crew here with me. Oh, man. I love your uh, I love your little intro. It's awesome. You know, yeah. things get done. <laughs> it is. is it working? <laughs> love it. Love it. I oh, love it. Yeah. Good tag. Yeah. So, man, how you guys been doing, man? I want to kind of just get to an idea of how you guys have uh, been adjusting to everything that's going on right now. I love the fact that you're both virtual. Uh, Tyler, let's start with you, right? How have things been going for you since um, the pandemic hit? Yeah, we. I mean, really, it's been going great. Um, and why I say that is a lot of our referrals are from the real estate market. Um, when someone buys a house, they're, you know, they need insurance, right? Uh, so realtors, mortgage reps, um, and that's how I know Dave and Jamie through that real estate market. Uh, they're great referral sources for me. And if you've been watching the news or seen anything, um, the real estate market is popping right now, um, especially here in Jersey. Um, house prices are going up. There's not enough listings out there. So people are just trying to find something to buy. Um, so I've been very fortunate that um, that is my biggest bi uh, business driver. And, you know, it, sometimes it's bad because we follow that real estate roller coaster. And when that time comes, we have to shift to figure out where we're getting business um, by doing other things that, that I do too. But um, being that is our biggest driving source and that we're at the top really of that roller coaster, we're taking it all in. So just to give you an idea that in August and J June, was our highest ever months um, from a sales standpoint um, since we opened in 2014. Um, so yeah, we really hasn't, haven't missed a beat. Maybe in March, we had a little bit of a slow month because people were still unsure of what was going on and right. they didn't want to buy a house, you know, no, not knowing what was happening. But since uh, April, I'd say we've been having like our best months, so. Nice, okay. That sounds good, man. I'm, you know, what's crazy too is um, <laughs> real estate is funny, isn't it? It's kind of like uh, with everything going on right now, uh, the last thing you want to do is be stuck in your apartment, right? Because yeah. then you can wind up going stir crazy and going nuts, right? Being around friends and fa or being around family. But to hear that you guys have been like skipped a beat, you know, that's not what we're hearing on the news. That's not what we're hearing in mass media. It's not what we're hearing at all. Right. People are leaving the cities, man. So people are leaving the city, especially. I mean, so we're about, so we're a suburb of Philly. And, you know, I mean, everyone's leaving New York and coming to Philly. And do you know what's crushing is the, uh, uh, the shore, the, the beaches in, in yeah. Jersey are ridiculous because yeah. everyone's remote. So the kids can go to a school that's only got 200 kids. Right. And, and they're staying away from, I mean, between March and May, 450,000 people left New York. Huh. Yeah, Crazy. you can feel it too when you're there, man. Like it's nuts. It's just like it's the twilight zone out there right now. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. How about you, Ryan? How have things been going for you since uh, the pandemic hit? Good, man. I mean, uh, you know, uh, we're blessed to be busy as well, too. I mean, I think that really kind of started to pick up at the uh, the end of June, beginning of July. Yeah. Um, you know, for me, um, in in the beginning days of all this, you know, 
one of the things I strive for as a biz dev guy is, you know, I don't really sell, right? right. So uh, I'm here. Uh, I make people aware of the things that we we can do. Um, but I, I'm a top of mind guy, right? One of my mantras is, as Tyler knows, I have many, but you know, first to mind, live in the feed is a big way that I live my life. And right. you know, I have a sales team before. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Can I interrupt you for a second? Sure, you sure. just hit three key. Man, <laughs> you listen, this is a man after my own heart right here. Right? <laughs> you just hit three key points in less than in less than two minutes, right? So top of mind is key, right? Top yep. of mind, live in the feed. I mean. Can you just like elaborate on that a little bit? And I'm sure Tyler, you can jump in whenever you want, right? Because that's yeah. where you are too. You're living in the feed, right? So just yeah. elaborate on that for me just a little bit. I know you. Yeah. So I think I think one of the things that people don't realize is that even though you work for a company, you are your own brand. Okay. And part of that mentality is staying relevant on people, right? right? So you know, and we'll talk about this later. I know it's part of kind of our agenda here, but like you know, the people that are cold calling and right. that are doing like cold emails and cold LinkedIn stuff. So if you're going to come to me, okay, someone who is connected and always looking to connect people, and you're going to try to cold sell me on something, and you don't think that I've got ten people that are giving me reciprocal business back right. and are friendly with me before I'm going to pick you, just some person who's a transaction salesperson because I'm right. a relationship manager. That's what I live for. I'm not right. here for one and dones. I'm not a vendor. Okay. We're partners. That's what right. we strive for. Right. So we stay in the feed. You know, I think people get overwhelmed with the amount of opportunities to be in the different feeds that are out there. Right. So right. what I say is some content is better than no content. Mm -hmm. Right. If you have a hard time with creating content, become a share maniac. Okay. Right. There are people that spend hundreds of millions of dollars through LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, mm -hmm. pick your poison, right? Mm -hmm. There's no reason that you can't just share the, that people's content that's relevant in either in the industry that you're in or trying to utilize the different, you know, classics, Motivation Monday, Tactical Tuesday, right. all that stuff, right? right? So find all those people that are spending all this money and use their content as your own. But yeah. don't do what I say, don't do blank shares, right? Don't right. just hit the share button, put it out. Make right. sure you write something that's relevant to what right. the post is and staying in top of mind and keeping that network, especially on LinkedIn, close to those people that you are with okay you can have a thousand people but you need to know 90 percent of those people right now on the other side of the coin facebook i'm friends with everybody i don't care <laughs> right. i just want as many eyeballs to see but with that linkedin group i am i'm maintaining that as a close network because i want the people that are utilizing me as a source for content when they see it to know who i am so that when it happens i'm staying real love it love it yeah you got anything to add to that tyler no, just no? I just okay. enforcement really for yeah. Harbinson. I mean, I haven't. Um, I was one of those people before I knew Harb, probably four or five years ago. I guess going on now, mm -hmm. and I was meaning I was the person that uh, I don't know what to say. Does this sound good? Like so, like worried about putting out Messaging. stuff on social media, and you know anything Harb saying on the social media front um, to your listeners. You know, li listen, listen to them because. I seen it firsthand work with him, um, being at events with him and people being, you're all over the place, you know, yeah. staying top of mind, exactly what he's saying. Yeah. And to be honest, I just did what he does. And I've done that now for two, three years. And I'll, same thing now happens for me. I'll go to like a real estate event and they're like, you're all over the place, you know, and yeah. really getting your name out there. So, yeah. so just an endorsement with, with Harvardson and um, to your listeners that yeah. listen to what the man says with social media. Nice. If I can just add one last thing to us. Yeah. The part of that too is that what you got to realize is you're educating the people that you're networking with all the time out there. So really what I do is I have a, I have a, a sales team of 40 people that don't work for ClearBridge that are always looking for keywords that are relevant to me. Right. So if anybody says rebrand or branding or marketing or social or web, they automatically say, did you talk to Ryan? Did you talk to Harv? Yeah. Have you talked to Harv yeah. yet? Yeah. And I don't have to do anything. And then I get leads that are coming in for me because a couple things. I mean, we're honest. We're right. good people. Right. We're not liars. You know, and I know that seems like, oh yeah, well, why would you want to be? But when you know, I'm sure you know, when you get in the business world, there's people out there that'll just flip stuff over just to make numbers. Right. And you know, if you're still living in those old days where it's all about the numbers and not about the long con, or as I call it, the crock pot mentality, right? right? Low right. and slow. Right. That's the name of the game. It comes in, you plant those seeds, you let it grow, and before yeah. you know it, two years in, you don't know what to do with it all. 
Yeah. So let's go back a little bit. Right. I like how you said that. And I just wanted to, you know, what happens a lot of times people use these buzzwords. They have no idea what it means. And it kind of, a lot of people, you know, it flies over their heads. So once you said live in the feed and you said top of mind, I'm like, you know, we need to hear more of that, but let's make sure you can get an idea of what that means from somebody who's directly, he's, you know, biz dev, he's branding. So you get it directly from the horse's mouth. Right. Have you found that you yourself have been living in the feed or that you have, uh, your business like took a hit maybe because of the pandemic and all these new adjustments and restrictions no. or has it increased? Increased. Yeah. I mean, honestly, so in the beginning of everything, I mean, we started March 17th was kind of like day one, right? I would say by the 26th, I was already running virtual content. Nice. Already yeah. day one. Um, I did not sell a single thing or pitch my products to anybody until like, the third week of June. Right. Okay. Um, my wife and I started developing these like business skits, you know, <laughs> and we had fun with it and we made people laugh. And, you know, the traffic on my page was huge just because everyone didn't know what to do. And, you know, 10 days into this thing, yeah, I saw people being like, oh, rates have never been lower. And today we can help you. And we're very open for business. And right. I'm like, these are transactional people. Right. There's no relationship so. involved in that. Right. So what I'm doing is I'm saying, hey, everybody, let's laugh. I know it sucks. Right. We got a bunch of people that used to do 20 events a week, and now we can't do any events. So let's figure out how we can utilize each other. And honestly, if you have not adapted, and really, I think there's still time to do it. The name of the game is introductions. Yeah. I have made so many introductions to everyone. I mean, people that I've met. That I've never even actually met in real life. <laughs> Just meeting these people in real life over the last like couple weeks. Right. I've done tons of work with them. Yeah. We work closing clients that we've never met in real life because of just everybody helping everybody out. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Let's let's go into like what that is, right? Because both of you are in a space where you know, especially I think pre-pandemic, relationship building sounded like something that was too far fetched. It didn't sound like something that was very doable because you get somebody who gets on the phone, you get a cold caller, and they're nervous on their end. They don't really know what they're going to say. They don't really want to make the call, right? So they're like, all right, I'm just going to make the call because I got to pay my bills, right? So they become super transactional with them not meaning to be transactional. It's just the way they were probably trained, poorly mm -hmm. trained, right? So you as a as the founder of a uh, of risk reduction, right, Tyler? Um, you seem to me, I guess, when we first started talking, you weren't ever, I didn't even know <laughs> you were the founder. <laughs> and I had to like look you up to see that you were the VP, right? And it was just like, I'm Tyler, right? And I think the same thing flew floor for you, Ryan, right? It was like, well, I'm, I'm, I do branding. This is what I love. And it was more about your, your, I guess, just the way you came across. It wasn't like you said, transactional at all. How have you guys right now with um, relationships, and pre-COVID, right, uh, this doesn't sound like it's a new theory or a new concept to you guys at all. You guys have always been centered on the relationship, right? So I break it down to two parts. There's building and there's cultivating, right? So where do you guys feel like you're doing most of your relationship building? Is it or, or, cult or both? Like what's going on with the, with the relationships? How do you know when to actually get to know the person or when to go ahead and pitch the person? Like how does that work for you? Yeah, you, you want me to start out, Ryan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, with, with me, I mean, I'm, and to just go back to the title thing that you were talking about real quick, I've never been, and my, I'm fortunate my company's the same way, um, and my other partners in the company, we're, we're not title people. Like, no one's, beneath, no one's beneath me. I'm not above anyone else. Um, if I need to ship something out and some, the warehouse guy's tied up, I'll go out and ship it myself. Yeah. Um, that's just kind of the type of people that, that we are. Um, and then from the relationship standpoint, um, just like Ryan was kind of talking about earlier, I'm not like a transactional person. Like when I meet, insurance is boring, you know, <laughs> to begin with. Right. So if I come in and, oh, I got these traveler's carriers, I got this, I got that, I can get you cheaper insurance. Like right. someone tunes it out. You see, I mean, you look on, you're on TV, say watching football last night, and there was probably 20 insurance commercials. So like what sets me apart from Geico, who's all they're doing is talking about price. And what that, what it is that sets me apart is the relationships that I build through networking, through one-to-one -one meetings, through introducing people to my network and then getting introduced to their network. Um, and I never, when I'm in a one-to-one -one meeting, because that's what my goal is, is to set up a one-to-one -one meeting after doing a big event or whatever. 
Mm. And when I go there, it's never, this is what I do. I'm always looking to what they do mm. and thinking, all right, how can I help this person? Um, yeah. One, because I'm generally a nice person and I want to help people. Right. And um, when, I, when I'm doing that, usually they want to return the favor. Um, so, so then, you know, they'll yeah. ask me what I do and they'll ask me, how can I help you? Because yeah. I'm looking first to help them. Um, and if, if they don't, then they're a transactional person and I probably won't talk to them again. Or yeah. if I see them at an event, I can't be mean to someone. So I'll still say hi and everything, but yeah. in the back of my head, I'm going, I'm not going to make an intro for this guy. Cause I tried that already. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of, that's, isn't it, it, isn't it funny how those conversations are, are shorter? Like you can literally go to somebody, you can have a conversation, or they can come to you and they become super transactional. And you could just tell they're not transactional, but they'll shake your hand and it's like, hi, what do you do? And yeah. It's you like, know what I mean? And it's like, oh, this is what I do. And yeah. do you need me to do, or do you know anybody? And then the conversation is kind of shorter, right? Because yeah. it kind of, it's a turnoff, right? How many times I'm in those conversations and I've, I, I talk to these people and we're like five, 10 minutes into it and they go, yeah. so what do you do? I'm like, <laughs> oh, I should probably tell you. There it is, yeah. So like, if, if I could just comment kind of off what Ty said too, right? So yeah. like, I think, you know, from what I seen too, right? So like that beginning of April, I, you know, in, in about three months. So I probably did about uh, 12 months of networking in 12 oh, wow. weeks, oh, wow. honestly. Um, and for me, you know, I'm never going into um, a one-on-one -on -one call with any intention of it being a sales transaction mm -hmm. at all. I mean, it literally is the point where people are like, oh, cool, great, we, you know, glad we could start this. So we're looking to do the site. And I'm like, oh, okay, we're, we're doing a sales call. All right, here we go. Let's, I got some questions I got to ask you guys and I go in. Like, I'm never going in for it as that, okay? Right. Um, I think the other the thing that people are afraid to do is to ask, okay? Yeah. So when you're in these transactions, right, what I'm looking, or in these, um, uh, these meetings, what I'm looking for is, okay, you've got this pool of people that spider web out. I've got this pool of people that spider web out. So how yeah. can we cross pollinate these two things? Love and, it. you know, we talked a little, a little bit about this before, but, you know, I'm like, who do you want to know? Like, what's a good fit for you? What industries right. do you work for? What other type of maybe professional services are you good with? And they go, yeah. I could work with everybody and everybody is great. And I right. can, and I'm like, stop. You're not really yeah. stop. Tell yeah. me what you want. So like for me, I have literally just had the same three or four things that I have said since the beginning of March. And that is yeah. all I'm looking for. Right. And yeah. that allows me to keep you top of mind when I hear people say that and I can say, okay, you need to know this person. Yeah. And it really allows me to understand how to hone in on that. Because if Tyler's an insurance guy and he says, I can work with everybody, I've already forgotten about Tyler. Right. Right. But if right. Tyler's like, we crush flood, Flood insurance is what we do. I'm like, yep. great. I got a flood guy. So anytime I hear anybody saying, oh, yeah, la, 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 and I go, oh, you got to know this guy. Yep. You know? Yeah. And I, I think the other side of the coin, too, is that when you got people like Tyler who are insurance people who are obviously a dime a dozen, but when they've got a great network, what I, I'm always doing is I'm just introducing them to other other power networkers. Yeah. That's the name of the game. Yeah. Power networker to power networker is way better than power network to person that works at bank X yeah, just because of whatever. Right. Yeah. So I want people to say, look, this is what I do. And Tyler's got a lot of my introductions. I go, Tyler, you need to know Steve, Steve, you need to know Tyler. There's great opportunities for you both to work and network together. Goodbye. And I leave. Yeah. And that's it. That's wow. all. Yeah. So now you got both people like, Oh, what can we do for you? Ryan? Right. <laughs> that's it. Right. So I think what's cool. And I think, um, what's, what's in a, in an ideal business world, that's how things should go. Right. But we don't really know it because I think there's this like, there's this like skepticism or this like level of cynicism where people are kind of like, well, I don't know if he's really good at what he says he does. So for you to identify your niche, for you to break it down and go, you know, yep. narrow down the ridiculous to, to dumb it down to somebody who's not in your industry and say, Hey, listen, like you said, flood, Tyler crushes flood. I got a flood guy. Right. Or branding. This is how I, even these markets are so saturated that it's hard to really figure out who does what and how good they are at it. So it's, it's, it's beneficial to both parties for you to really find a, yeah. a nuance, the niche, right? And then try to like uh, create relationships around that. But I think part of that too is, is having a good elevator pitch. 
okay. right? And, and, yeah. and, and utilizing your pitch when people say, so tell me a little bit about your company, right? right. So if you tell me I got a 30 second pitch that's really nice and neat, hits everything I need to do. It's yeah. not salesy, but yeah. it lets you and educates people on who we are as a company. Right. And that's very important. When people right. say, what do you do? And you go, oh, I could do websites and we do this. No, yeah. we're not, you know, we're like a group of industry vets that have come together. We do branding yeah. creative. Like we go through the whole thing. Like yeah. it's a different animal. And, and when you say it like that, instead of just being like, I do branding. Right. <laughs> you know, like, cool. Yeah. That's and I, guess right. what? My niece has a branding company too. She does Instagram ads. You know what I mean? So it's the same thing. <laughs> Right, right. I like that. So look, so I think um, the other thing that's interesting, I was watching the presidential debate just last week, right? And uh, if they talked for a matter of like more than two minutes, they get muted, right? Yeah. So it brings me, and I was thinking about the elevator pitch too. I was like, dang, this guy's going to have to really work on his pitch, right? So the, the elevator pitch does create a sense of urgency and it does let, you know, it's kind of like in 30 seconds or less or within 30 seconds to 45 seconds, try to get your message across. And if somebody does ask a little bit more, try to get that out within two minutes, uh -huh. right? Because it's more about, you know, are, you, are we a good fit for each other? Are we going to mesh, right? Is there synergy here, right? Yep. If not, then you'll be able to know in less than five minutes. That's yep. the idea behind the elevator pitch and like that two minute pitch, right? And having it nuanced, right? Yep. And that's where your brand comes into play, right? So like if you go to our website, you check out all our social media and all that, you right. see that we do what we say just through our site itself. And I think yeah. that's really important. People sleep on their web. Like web is so important right now and other than no other time. I mean, internet and traffic is up over 300%. Yeah. Yeah. People are not leaving their computers and they're doing more research and people are more accessible than ever. So if you're not utilizing at least your site, cleaning up all your social to kind of continue to put out content to, right. to kind of push yourself and to elevate yourself. Right. You're missing out on this time more than ever. It really yeah. is craziness. Let's put you guys in the other shoe, shoe on the other foot, right? So like uh, you guys are like, you're really good at what you do and you've been doing it for a long time. Uh, Ryan, you've been doing what you've been doing for about 15 years now. Um, Tyler, you mentioned, you know, back in, old, I think, old, what was it? Old, what, when you just opened up four, three years ago? We opened up. I've been with the same comp my parent company, though, for going on nine years. Okay, right. So that's a lot of experience that you guys have. How, how do you guys respond to trying to being pitched? How do you guys respond to being pitched or to trying to be sold? Can I, can I go first on this one? Yeah. This is my <laughs> favorite, for. right? Yeah. So, so what I love is, and it's usually the same kind of people, right? So it's either insurance people, yeah. it's financial advisors, it's CPAs, yeah. all that stuff. Right. All that stuff. Right. So they're always, it's always numbers people that are, are pitching hard and they, they, they always come from the old school phone book guys, right? Like, Hey, I got the phone book three days before everybody else. Right. Dollars for dollars, baby. Here we go. It's a numbers <laughs> game, you know? Yeah. And like, we could all do that and crush it. Boy, I make a thousand phone calls in a, in a week, but guess yeah. what? If that guy gets a better deal, he's leaving. He doesn't even know who I am, right? right? So what I like to do is when they start coming out, have you ever looked into annuities? The annuity rates have never been lower. And I'm like, dude, relax get this right? guy on SNL. he's still good at that yeah. calm down so like i like i like two two or three different questions to hit them with that kind of like resets their brain go for hey, it hey where'd you grow up great one right that one doesn't always work because they're like well i grew up here and then i went to school and now because of that and bang we're right back in where we started right. the other one is is did you always want to sell insurance wow and they're like, well, I went to art school and I, uh, and then bang, here we go. So it's, it's trying to, to take them off, but, but at the same time, there's some guys and gals that just don't care. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All they're here is to pitch it and right. that's it. So, right. yeah, that's, and I know I'm sure Tyler deals with it too. Cause when you're in a professional service world, it's yeah. just, everyone's like, oh, well I'll give you leads and I can pay you for leads. I'm like, dude, I don't yeah. want your money. I <laughs> I yeah. this all the time with life insurance guys um, and FAs and stuff, and um, I'll I'll hear them out. Like I'll do a one to one, or I'll do I'll do a Zoom or a call. I just did one a couple weeks ago. But when they're like just pounding, like, oh, this is what we're doing with our markets, because they're all really the same. Right. <laughs> At right. the end of the day, like I, it literally it's like a broken record when I sit down with some of these FAs and it's like, all right, what well, you're going to talk to me about? your life insurance policies and how I can start sending your clients. And like, I know going in pretty much what it's going to be. Yeah. Um, and if, if it's not that, then we link up and we get, you know, we do business together. But if it is that I'll hear, I'll hear them out. But then like afterwards, they'll keep hitting me with emails, you know, Hey, did you get a chance to look at this? Hey, did you get a chance? I just ignore them. 
I'll be honest. <laughs> or I'm like, no, I haven't looked at it yet. Or because they're not the type of people that I want to do business with. And at the end of the day, they're not the type of people they're going to send me clients, even though they're, oh, right. clients, they're not going to, because they've had probably had this conversation with 10 other insurance agents. Yeah. Oh, I'm looking for a property and casualty guy. Yeah, just, right. Now you're looking for one. What the past 10 years, you haven't found any. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, okay. So yeah. I kind of, yeah, yeah, I don't and I don't envy his world because then you got to deal with all the title people too, right? Like, I'll take you to a Flyers game. We'll go to the Flyers game. We'll go to the bar, and it's like, no, thank yeah. you. Yeah. So I'm just like, yeah, you know, I'm so, sure that you've found a property and casualty guy in the past ten years, and you probably have multiple, so you're not going to send me clients. So yeah, that's I mean, hilarious. It is funny, and I, you know, being in the the branding world, we get all kinds of people that are trying to like be part of the services that we provide. Sure. And we don't do them all in house. A yeah. lot of it, right? Okay. And we have partners and stuff like that, but we have relationships with those people. And they're like, "I discovered your LinkedIn profile, and I feel like there's opportunities for yeah. us." To, so what are you doing? Get out of my face! <laughs> right. I would rather get a, a a cold phone call or a cold email than a cold LinkedIn message. Okay, uh, get into worst. That. Let's the get worst. into that. Because so let's get into that, right? What I tell people, what's that? Matt, I wanted to add to the heart. Yeah, yeah. Go for it. What with the LinkedIn messages, mine's the worst because on LinkedIn, my first name is actually Eugene, but so I have an E Tyler Arjun. And what they'll do is they'll message me and they'll say, hi, E. And then, <laughs> ah, I'm just like, just scrubbing it. No effort into that. You're not getting oh, enough my God. Right. <laughs> wow. The worst. What I tell people is, look, if you're going to, and this is where I, I'm trying to put it like, so that, you know, we're, we're trying to say that even though they're transactional, even though they're probably hard salespeople, they have a, a good intent. That's where I'm coming from, right? Yeah. You have some kind of good intent. You want to help somebody, right? You just need some, you just need to be retrained or maybe you kind of got to brush up on your skills, right? So what I'd like to tell people is, listen, pitch the way you want to be pitched too, yeah, right? Take, reverse without, the hat. Yeah, without making it a pitch, right? Take out the pitch and just start, take your pre-qualifying questions and just start to talk to people, make it conversational, Right. Because then at this at the end of the day, there's a rule, right? There's a 70 30 rule that I apply. Right. You do 70 percent of the listening and 30 percent of the talking by asking open ended questions. And they'll your prospect will just give you whatever they, that you want to know. You'll check the boxes, right. but you got to ask questions that they really want to answer. Right. So you could do at least 70 percent of the listening, less talking. Right. Um, what I think also is like a little bit crazy for people is they don't know when to make the ask. Right. So when you make the ask, now you feel like you're getting, when if somebody makes the ask, they feel like they're pitching or they feel like, you know, the person is receiving it as a pitch. So how do you, what do you say to guys, right? When they have to make the ask, because they got to pay their bills. They got to sell that policy. They got to buy, pick a program from, you know, uh, the branding websites or whatever it is, right? How do you like advise people to make the ask? When is a good time to make the ask so that it's not too pitchy? So it's not too salesy. So it's more relational you have to it's not the first time it's got to be the third the third or fourth you know yeah meeting or relationship that's developed with that yeah. because if you're going to ask me on the first time i'm just going to say hey man i don't make those decisions sorry and my boss is not going to talk to you gotcha but if it's if it's the third or fourth time and they're like hey man i know you guys are probably doing like you know accounting with somebody but like do you think there would be an opportunity for us to look at it? And I go, right. Yeah, dude. I mean, like I, we can, we can have, we can have a conversation. I can't guarantee it's going to go anywhere, right. but you're obviously, you obviously get the name of the game. Right. But if you're coming in and every conversation that I have with you is you trying to say, we need to work together. We need to work together. We need to work together. I'm just not even going to, it's going to slowly, you're going to slowly get out. I mean, it's the same way we kind of live life over here on the, on the East coast. Right. Right. You right. Bust your balls then we don't like you, yeah. right? It's the same yeah. kind of deal. So like right. having people not talk to you- I bust your balls because I do like you. Like, yeah, exactly. I give a hard time because I like them. You know what having, I mean? Having someone not talk to you at all is actually way worse over here in, in Jersey because we're oh, like, yeah. oh man, no one must like me because no one's making fun <laughs> of me shit, man. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's the same kind of thing, right? Like it's, it's got to be, it, uh, it's just got to be slow. I mean, you can come in and you can make your organic conversation that's right. hitting the points that you want to hit but I'm still not going to be like, oh man, thanks so much. Like we need to do your, you need to do our insurance, even though I just met you at a chamber event. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What do you think, Tyler? How do you like suggest people make the ask when it's time to make the ask? 
Yeah, um, I mean, I'd agree with her a couple times after talking and meeting and stuff. Um, I mean, and it's one thing, it's how you ask, right? So yeah. if you're explaining what you do in our first meeting and stuff, and it, it sounds interesting, um, but rather than like literally asking, can I see your business? You just tell them this is what I do. And, and then for, for me, at least I'd say, yeah, I do flood insurance and um, these are good introductions for me. Yeah. And if that person's like, oh, I have a short house. Can you look at my thing? Then that, that's, I got the job, same job done without having to be like, you should Correct. use me. <laughs> yeah. um, so I, I found if you you be a gr organic with it by just sharing what you do. And like Ryan said, you have a good elevator pitch. Yeah. Um, have them ask you, like, you know, ha have them ask if, oh, I, I deal with flood, flood insurance a lot, or I, I have an aunt that has flood insurance. Yeah. I, I should introduce you to it. It's like, oh, great. Now, now they're offering it as opposed to me, you know, asking for something. Yeah. Um, I, I feel more success in that than, than anything. Yeah. yeah and, and there's just too many, there's too many people now. I don't see, I'm seeing it less and less mm -hmm. as the, the old school sales generation is kind of like leaving the, the, the workforce. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I, there was a time where it was a lot of vomit sales going on yeah. and a lot of, a lot of card flingers, like right. literally like, I mean, Tyler's been in with me. Ninja star. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Tyler and I are sitting there t chatting with like a handful of people and right. they basically run up and like, we're in the middle of a conversation, not even talking about work. We're like, cool. Oh, cool. Let's talk about whatever. Right. And they walk in, they're like, hi, I'm, I'm Tina. I do graphics and design. Here you go. Okay. Bye. And they leave. And we're like, we're like, yeah. who the, what, what? Yeah. what is going on? Yeah. Like I'll never forget the best one ever was. So before I was in the, in the, working with uh, the branding stuff, I was doing kind of, um, print so uh, print design mail so kind of the same world but not as uh -huh. overwhelming right? right and we're literally sitting at an event and this woman comes up and there's like four or five of us sitting in the group and she's like how you doing i do print and, uh print and we do graphics and like everybody grabs their card and they all kind of stop and they say yeah harb does that and uh -huh. we already use him and she was uh -huh. like oh, oh okay well goodbye and she like stormed off and then we watched her go to another group and she's like hi i'm good, good to meet you how you doing and it's yeah. like what are you poor, doing yeah poor lady i feel bad for those people when i see that it's tough man you know that's tough to see so <laughs> that's really tough to see <laughs> just flinging them just yeah so take me out for a few drinks <laughs> right? yeah so take let, take let me out get for to a few know drinks. you i want yeah. to get to know people that's yeah. the name of the game. It's dating, right? But it's, it is. I'm going to see a lot of these people more than I see my own family. Right, right. And like, you know, the funny think part, about that. The funny part of it is you don't want to, what's crazy is you don't want to be in bed with the wrong person, right? And you might have to fire your clients at some point because they're, uh, not, yeah. ideal. they're not ideal clients for you. It's not an ideal fit, no. right? So I think that's the, I think what you're saying is, is good. Like the whole, you know, at least third or fourth time, try to make sure we're a good fit. Cause you might get stuck with this person now. Right. And um, they might We've not, there's it. rules of engagement. Right. So it's like, they don't yeah. follow your rules of engagement and you guys are not a good fit for each other. And it's like, they're constantly calling. They're constantly trying to, you know, tell you how to yeah. do the job. They're not meeting your standards. Your, so it's like, it's hard. I think that that third time around when you guys talk, maybe to that second meeting or that third meeting, then you'll know whether or not you guys are going to do business well together. Right? I mean, we've done it before too. I mean, we had a good opportunity. It was a nice price tag and it was going to be a long contract for like a, a new venue, a venture that was coming up. And it was just like, we had a grid meeting and then it was like, the rest of the management team came in and it was just, I don't know. And then it was a lot of like back and forth. And it was like, look, I, I do sales. Yeah. And I, I have numbers that I want to hit, but this is going to be such a pain in the ass that it's just like it. yeah. not worth it, man. Yeah. Cause you guys are already telling us how to do our job and we're the experts in the field. Yeah. And there's a reason that you are having a conversation with us. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it's just sometimes you have to do it, man, because it's just not worth the headaches and the hassle. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about that. Right. Let's talk a little bit about like so what you do, for instance, you're, you do branding, but you are. And I want you kind of just to like specify exactly what you do for branding. And not only that, though, um, <laughs> when people say, OK, so just to like talk this this language. Right. Because you have to bring out the phone book. OK. So you took it back to like boiler room days. Right. Yes, sir. So it's like reputation today is actually relationships today is social currency okay 
Mm-hmm. That's how I see it, right? Absolutely. Right, and those are the new hashtags or the new phrases we're using, phraseology or whatever, right? And then you have branding is essentially your reputation, right? Would you say is that is that fair to say? Yeah, I think branding more is the consistency of who you are as okay. well. So too. like reputation, and, right? Yeah, reputation, absolutely. I mean, but I think the problem is is that people think of branding as just a logo. Right. Not a logo. Talk to me. The logo yeah. is just the beginning of what it is, right? You yeah. know, your branding is your culture. Your branding is your reputation with your clients. You know, your branding is not being afraid to put out who your client list is yeah. so that people can see who you work with. Right. You know, I, I we, we work with people and, and I do a lot of like LinkedIn training stuff and stuff like that too. And, you know, one of the big things I hear is always like, well, we don't want to put our clients on the website or I don't want people to see my connections because I don't want people to steal my clients. Sure. I'm like, do you hear the things that you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> is the relationship that you have with the people that you work with that bad that if somebody else comes in and says, hey, we're cheaper or X, right. Y, and Z, that they're just going to up and go? Right. Because not in our world, our right. clients love us. Right. Because we love, we love working with our clients because, you know, we look at, our brand is a different element, right? So like, especially on the biz dev side. So like, we're not transactional biz dev people. So like, once you become a client of mine, then you get integrated into my network. So not only are we doing your brand and pushing your, your you know, best in show campaign across the multiple platforms to yeah. push that understanding and educate people on who your brand is, you also get integrated into a large network of our team to get introduced to people that makes more sense for you. Nice, nice. Yeah. Let's go into that though. So when we talk about branding specifically for small business owners, they do get that confusion where it's like, let's just look at like a real estate office, for instance, or somebody who's working in insurance, right? Yeah. And what I tell people is, listen, you're going to fly the flag all day and, the, and you'll probably, you know, be able to attract clients, your customer base because of your, of the flag you're flying, right? Totally. The office you're with, right? But then for you to identify your ideal clients, you have to be able to start branding yourself individually. And that's what I right? say all the time. And especially, the, especially in the real estate world, right? So like, you know, I work for Clear Ridge Branding Agency, but yeah. I have my own brand okay. called Where's Harb, right? Okay. I've created my own personal brand that is just across multiple platforms. Yeah. Because whenever I go to events or I don't go to events, what do people ask? Yeah. Where's, Where's Harb? Harb? <laughs> right. Great. Right? right. So, you know, part of it is understanding that you are part of the brand, even though you work for someone else. Right. Okay. And there's a big difference because your brand as a, as a company yeah. is different than your brand as a culture. All right. Okay. Yeah. So there's a difference between corporate content and culture content. Nice. All right. And yeah. the problem is, is that yes, sometimes working for agencies like us is a little too expensive. It's not in the price range and you don't have five, 10 grand a month to do big monster campaigns that go across multiple platforms and all that. Yeah. But the internet is free. It's free. And social media is yeah. free. Yeah. So if you're not creating content on those platforms, especially if you're just sticking with just the basics, yeah. LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And yeah. you're telling a different story on each one of those platforms, but you're utilizing the, the industry, uh, each platform to tell the culture about your business. All right. So for example, I go to a restaurant and I know the owners. All right. It's a right. different story based on each platform. All right. On LinkedIn, I'm taking a picture with both the people that I know. Yeah. Okay. If I'm on Facebook, I'm taking a selfie with the whole table of everyone I'm with. Yeah. If I'm on Instagram, I'm taking a picture of my plate. Nice. Right. Same story, different yeah. audience, different messaging. Yeah. Right. And that doesn't cost me any money. Right. All right. The other thing too, is if you're in these small business worlds and you're feeling so overwhelmed on what to do and, and you're overthinking your content so much that you're not creating any content at all, right. you need to create a content calendar schedule. Mm-hmm. Okay. Go get a whiteboard, write up your stuff. If you go to like, um, uh, like, uh, uh, uh the auto parts zone, you can actually get like pinstripe tape okay. to kind of li- like divvy out your boards and mm-hmm. just write your content on what you want to do. Right. On days, we're going to do this. Yeah. Tuesdays, we're going to do this. And yeah. then you can invest in something like Hootsuite, right? Hootsuite will automatically post all your content throughout every day based on different platforms and you can schedule out all your content so that nice. you're always putting things out. And then on top of that, you're getting engaged in the conversation, yeah. right? Content is king engagement is queen yeah so if you're not liking commenting and sharing on all three of those platforms all the time you know 90 posts a day 10 different hashtags for each one of those posts yeah long slow 
drive and you'll yeah. bring you'll bring in content and i mean you'll bring in customers you will. love it love it love it you hit a lot of key points there man so the content calendar get the content calendar so you can start creating content i like to use hashtags i'll do like a moonshot monday or a topsy turvy tuesday i'll do that kind of thing but i like what you're saying because it's more it's more structured it's more intentional and it's something that you kind of get it done and you just get it out the way right yep. the last thing and the, i think that really resonated with me was um you said content is king, is queen, and engagement is queen. Is that what you said? Yeah, so content is king, engagement yeah. is queen. Yeah, so that's, I love that. That's good stuff. Uh, Tyler, what do you do for marketing, like uh, for uh, branding yourself, rather? Yeah, yeah. So um, we have a, I'm fortunate that my parent company is um, a pretty large company. So we have an in-house yeah. marketing, uh, marketing department. Um, so anything from folders, because I, I, a lot of my business uh, comes from the real estate market, like I was saying, but I teach uh, CE classes for that industry. He so, does a great job with that. And that's great content that he puts out too, because he's all over the country. Wow. Yeah. yeah so um, I do a lot of these educational webinars mm -hmm. in the office, uh, like Brian said, all over the country. And um, I'm just painting myself as that flood insurance expert through teaching them about flood insurance. Right, right. Um, now, when they think of flood insurance, any of these places, they're thinking, oh, that guy who came in for a C class and taught us on it. Like, maybe right. I didn't get any, everything that, what he said, but yeah. I know he knows the stuff because he's teaching about it. Yeah. Um, and then having folders for when I do them, uh, having different flyers about that. Yeah. Um, social media, I'll put hashtags like flood insurance experts mm -hmm. on the back of it um posted wherever i am so if i'm last two weeks ago i was in brigantine teaching a class i posted hey this yeah. is keller williams brigantine um on how to sell homes in flood zones let me know if you know you'd like me in your office um so we've uh, really done a lot of our um lead generation through educating um our partners uh and, and in doing that it, it's gotten us a ton of business nice okay yeah let's talk a little bit about uh what you guys so you have two models out there right there's a qualitative model there's a quantitative model right and um for guys like us uh because we're so relationship centered right and client oriented and like outcome driven right i think uh the qualitative model is where i i find myself right and there's times when i can mesh the two right uh, in your space, uh, especially with you, Tyler, right? Well, what's going on right now with real estate and how crazy real estate is, right? You, you probably got a lot of deals going on. You probably got a lot of people calling your phone's ringing. Even before we started, you were on the phone, right? So there's a lot, there's a lot of quantity. There's a lot of volume, a lot of activity going on on your end, right? What do you feel works best for, uh, for you and uh, maybe for your client base, for your, for your clients? Is it more quality or is it more quantity or is it a combination of both? Yeah, so I'd say it's a combination of both. Um, and what I mean by that is from a client standpoint, it's quantity. Um, it has to be in the insurance industry yeah. because, you know, to give you an example, if I was a realtor, because I, I do have my real estate license, if I was a realtor, I sell a $500,000 house, I'm making probably 10 grand commission, right? Um, which is a big, you know, big number. In insurance, we get a percentage of the premium and we're already selling our objective is to get you a low premium so if i sell let's say a thousand dollars just for easy numbers a thousand dollar policy we're probably only making 150 bucks if that mm -hmm. um and it's all about residuals in the insurance world so yeah. the more the bigger my book of business is the more people are renewing we get paid every time that they renew so from a client standpoint i'd say it's quantity um from the real estate industry getting leads in, um, it's quantity and quality. So I wanna meet big time realtors and yeah. big time mortgage reps because now I, I can just you know, form a relationship with say 10 people um, that are doing 30, 40 deals a month as opposed to hitting you know, 100 people that are just doing one or two deals a month. Hmm. Um, so it's more, more of a, a combination on getting the referrals, but from a client standpoint, it's definitely quantity. Gotcha. Yeah. What about you, Ryan? Yeah. I mean, for us, uh, the quality creates the quantity, honestly. Um, you know, what we really do is we strive to put out the best product we can um, and really develop a relationship with our customers and always be kind of on uh, 
the trends, um, yeah. understanding what's going on, yeah. um, and constantly shifting their dollars around, you know, weekly based on what we're seeing. Um, yeah. You know, we are not a, um, here's your budget, this is what you agreed to, mm -hmm. push the button, good luck. You know, we're always constantly watching and seeing what's performing better than the last. Right. And sometimes the things that we didn't think were going to do as great are doing great and vice versa. So we're going to move that over to the next area. So, you know, I think for us, you know, we've only been around for about five years now. And, you know, for us, the because of the quality of work that we do, um, it is creating the quantity um, as well. Um, you know, and part of, you know, myself joining the team was to um, expand uh, the reach and the education and understanding on who we are as a company. Yeah. Um, so with all that kind of now in this great little pot, um, it's, it's really, uh, we're really blessed to be this busy and, and, but still strive to do a great work. I mean, you know, we've had clients call us and they say, Hey, you have to stop this campaign. We can't take it anymore <laughs> because there's too many emails and too many phone calls coming in. So yeah. that's the kind of stuff that we love to hear. Right. Um, and we are um, always uh, allowing our potential clients to call our existing clients. And um, it, it really goes a long way. I mean, um, I would rather have um, six or seven, you know, small clients that we do great work for, uh, than have a giant juggernaut and only have that one. I mean, yeah. that's the name of the game. Now, don't get me wrong. We would love Coca-Cola and all that good stuff. But yeah. with that comes a whole nother animal. And um, there's too many people on the food chain at that point. With us, you know, we are working with everybody from, you know, multi-million dollar companies to, you know, single run dentist offices. Yeah. yeah. And, and for our talent that we have, I mean, we're really a group of industry vets, um, you know, with people that are expert writer for Forbes. We've worked with fortune 500 companies and, you know, we look at things from more of an a la carte perspective, which is unheard of with the talent level that we have. So that's amazing. Yeah. I like the way that you put it because it's like, it does go, they, they kind of go back and forth, don't they? From quality to quantity, depending mm -hmm. on how, mm -hmm. what the needs are. Right. So I think that's good that you said that because a lot of people are just quantity, 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 hard sell, hard sell, hard sell. Right. And a quick turnaround, quick turnaround. But because you're trying to go so hard, your turnaround, you have no turnaround. You wind yep. up losing those leads. You long burn con, leads. man, long con. Like I yeah. said before, crockpot, low and slow. Low and slow. The game. Yeah, you're pretty consistent. Uh, love it. Where do you see, okay, branding, three, five years from now, you've got Fiverr, you've got all these apps, right? And like you said, people reduce branding down to a logo. So yeah. talk to me, where do you see branding, like say three, five years from now, especially after this pandemic? <sighs> it's just going to continue to grow. Digital is never going to go away. It's going to continue to get more insane. Um, I mean, we've got a lot of, I mean, for my vision is going to, you're going to see a huge push uh, in the next probably mm -hmm. more five years uh, with AR and MR really coming into the mainframe. So all, all, uh, augmented reality and mixed reality, right? Um, you know, the uh, Oculus and all that stuff is great, but it's still not a functional, everyday usable unit, right? It's playing mm -hmm. games and watching movies and stuff. But you're going to see the next iterations of Google Glass um, and uh, with, you know, it didn't do too well, did it? <laughs> too early. Tech was yeah. too expensive. The, what was it? The, it I, there was too much information coming in and the funnel was too small to handle the information that they were trying to pump into those glasses. Yeah. I mean, they have, they have the Alexa glasses now that, you know, are playing sound into the bone, okay. not into the ears. Right. Yeah. So that's a huge thing. Yeah. Um, you're going to see the opportunities for um, peripherals are going to really explode over the next couple of years. I think you're really going to see that. I mean, you know, we've been in this, this, this constant bigger, smaller, faster, stronger, bigger, smaller, faster, stronger, right. Going on for the last, since the iPhone six, yeah. right? There hasn't been like this, holy shit moment when something <laughs> new has come out. Yeah. And I think that's coming. And I think yeah. a lot of it's going to be the peripherals. They're holding think, on to it. Yeah, they are. And I, I think glasses is going to be the key, right? You're going to be able to be able to uh, watch something that's going to be MR. So yeah. mixed reality where I can still see the entire environment that I have. But if you look on this wall and you have the glasses, you can see my Spotify playlist. Huh. And that stuff is already available, but it's very low, low end. Nice. You know, you're going to see a lot of that coming in. And yeah. with that allows more opportunities for, for marketing to grow. Now nice. with the evolution of the smart, everything coming in, it's going to get even more insane, right? And I'll give you a little tip of the iceberg, right? Yeah, so I've got, I've got a Wi-Fi network that connects to all my devices and everything, including my refrigerator. 
okay? So my refrigerator has a camera inside that's watching everything that I'm consuming, okay? Huh. Let's say that the fridge starts to learn that every week I go through about two different bottles of orange juice, okay? Now I've got ways up in my car driving to my next location. I get ads for discounts, buy two, two for five dollars at Acme right. for orange juice because the Wi-Fi told the refrigerator that I'm about to probably need orange juice. Wow. Yeah. That's and that's scary. this that's this scary. big. <laughs> that's scary. You, yeah. I mean there's about seventeen thousand touch points that we're gonna be able to get into. And wow. if you haven't watched the the great hack, yeah. The brain will explode. Yeah, I'm going to watch that now. It's, it's all coming, man. You know, the social credit score stuff is coming. Facial yeah. recognition is through the roof. Uh, yeah. It's getting scary. It's big brother to the max. But if it's controlled correctly and not abused, it, it'll help people out. I mean, right. you know, we're just – we have the opportunity because of the information that right. everybody is putting out on a constant level. And the younger generation is so immune to it as yeah. it just being as normal life. Yeah. You know, they are not afraid to just tell the world everything that they're doing. Yeah. And because of that, I'm able to utilize all that data to then get the products and the messaging to the correct target audiences to a, such a micro opportunity. It's just unbelievable. Yeah. We're going to have to explore that. You just opened up a whole can of worms. So we're going to have to explore that more and the, like on some, at some point. Right. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, you, Tyler, with uh, the climate change and everything going on. Right. I think that's a, a huge issue right now that we're concerned about. So flooding is a big deal. And you go to places like Miami where you have to have hurricane insurance. Where do you see your industry like three or five years from now? Yeah. So um, I, I mean, an easy answer that you probably would guess it's definitely growing. Um, and unfortunately, the government is the one who controls all the flood maps and, and everything. Mm -hmm. And um, as, as we get younger people in positions in gov of government, um, I think then it'll start to change where more areas are going to be mapped in the flood zones. Um, to, give you, to give you a stat, Hurricane Harvey in 2018 70% of the homes that were damaged and um, that were full rebuilds mm -hmm. were outside of the actual flood zones that FEMA had wow. um, set. A wow. reason why is that it's all through government. The flood maps have to be adopted. They have yeah. to be accepted by the town. Um, that It opens up all these cans of worms that really no politician wants to be the guy who says, all you houses are in the flood zone now and you're required right. to have flood insurance. Right. No, it's like a catch-22. Do we want to help people because right. they should have flood insurance right. and protect their homes because 70% of the homes were outside of the flood zone? Or do we want to, you know, most people don't want to pay flood insurance. They're not right. looking at it from you're protecting them. They're right. looking at it from now this guy's requiring me to pay another $1,000, $2,000 a year that I don't want to pay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think as more, like I said, younger people start to get in the office and are looking at environmental change and all that, um, that stuff will begin to change. And it needs to, because right now we're looking at, and I'll give you another example. Here in New Jersey, uh, the preliminary maps, which means the new flood maps that were coming out, mm -hmm. were supposed to come out, I'd say, 2016. Uh, they still have, most of them still haven't been adopted yet mm -hmm. because New York City sued FEMA, um, they were in court. They didn't want to adopt the maps. Wow. Um, so, that, and that's everywhere. That's not just here in Jersey. But since I started working here, I've been telling people, yeah, the new maps are coming out in the next two years because that's what I've been told. And yeah. that's, that's going on eight years now. <laughs> so, um, as yeah. I think as younger people get in and more emphasis is on environmental change and, and everything like that, you know, I, I know global warming and all that is like a, big topic and political topic we don't want to get into right. um but just going on the past 10 years from a hurricane standpoint there's more hurricanes now than ever and you can look that up and i know some politicians will say you know it's the same as it's always been but there's been more devastating hurricanes since hurricane katrina right. than there's ever been right um right. and 
you know, the walls and, and everything like that needs to change with that. Unfortunately, they haven't changed yet. Yeah. Um, and maybe it takes more private companies, which you've seen lately, private flood insurance is getting yeah. bigger, bigger and bigger. And it's just came out the past five years. Yeah. As yeah. more private companies get into the market and dictate this type of stuff, um, you're going to see more changes. Um, because before these private companies got in, the only place you could get flood insurance is through the government um before say 2010 yeah. i'd say um and that was since 1969 that's wow. when the government had to step in and start offering flood insurance so i think as time goes on more private companies get in and look at it from a profit standpoint um as opposed to the government looking at it as from a voting standpoint yeah um, you're going to see more and more changes happening um with that and you know being that we're in the flood industry we're up to date on the education and everything. Um, we're up to speed on our websites, um, making sure that we have a rater on our website. So you go on, you can get a flood insurance quote right on our website. Oh, nice. Uh, that's, as Ryan was talking about, as younger generation gets in, mm -hmm. I'm not, I'll, I'll be honest, most of the people I talk to from a client standpoint, I'd say is post probably 40 to 50 years old. Um, as younger people get into flood zones and they're buying shore houses and they're doing that, yeah. Um. They're they're just going online and getting quotes. Yeah. They don't want to talk to anybody. They don't want to talk to anybody. <laughs> right. So getting ahead of that game by maximizing our website, um, Google AdWords, all that stuff is so critical, and it's going to mean more um, in five years than than it's ever had. Right. And, and you got to remember too, great timing like for your site, like for people to be on is twenty seconds. Yep. Hmm. Yep. And we're like, dude, you're crushing it. You got people on the site for 45 seconds. Like, yeah. you're killing it. Wow. That's a big deal. Well, people yeah. come in. They find what they want. If your website looks like shit, they leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Let's play a quick game. I like what you talked about there with that, with the uh, with the climate change and all. What's crazy, too, I think uh, with China, China, got, I think their dam just, like, broke, no? Right? Yeah. I Did that, that break? I saw that that was, like, on its yeah. way out the door. It's Yeah, yeah it broke. And, like, there's part of China that's already, like, uh, was, crazy flood zone right houses were like forget it it's a big deal um but that was like a while ago it was like like a month or two ago uh whew. yeah but that's a whole other topic you guys just gave me a reason that you know we got to have another conversation <laughs> it's also right? bad engineering yeah okay yeah. <laughs> see that's more conversation right there i think we got to do this longer next time um yeah quick game we'll call it hands down the lightning round all right I ask you guys <laughs> yeah three questions three topics uh you give me your bottom line about these topics. If you don't want to talk about the topic, just say pass and I'll move on to the next one. Okay. Sounds good. All right. All right. So the first one is uh, your favorite sales movie of all time. Mm. Sales movie of all time. Yeah. Uh, planes, trains, and automobiles. Oh, wow. I haven't even seen that one. Who's in it? Uh, John Candy and uh, Steve Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be good, man. <laughs> yeah. John Candy's like uh, just yeah. an old school salesman, and it's like the, it's like a buddy comedy. He's funny, funny as hell. Yeah, I love John. It's not like a true sales thing, but he's definitely like very salesman yeah. crazy in that one, and it's hilarious. Rest Classic. He's John Candy, man. Yeah. That's my dude. 85, 86, 87, something like that. Wow. Okay. What about you, Tyler? So um, I'm fortunate I can say now, back when I was a kid, I w wouldn't say this, but I'm fortunate that my parents – uh, my mom owns a real estate company, very driven. My dad um, is a, the vice president of um, uh, G, not GM. Um, uh, they just got pulled out. Air con and it's an air conditioning manufacturer. Um, but I'm fortunate that they've been very motivational. They've made me watch, read books when I was 13 right. about the seven, you know, the seven highly effective habits, all that stuff. You hypnotized so, you, yeah. <laughs> So I've been like, yeah, so I, I've been like this my whole life. Um, it's hard to pick. I mean, I, I like The Pursuit of Happiness. That was an awesome movie. Um, su such a good movie. Will Smith played great in that. Um, recently, The Wolf of Wall Street. I mean, that was more of like a comedy yeah. um, type movie. But that, that movie's great. I Jeremy that Fire. movie. Yeah. I mean, I, I've seen them all, and I, I've liked something from all of them. But yeah. I don't know. I think The Pursuit of Happiness is just like a real feel-good like yeah it's this good guy one. worked his ass off you yeah, know yeah. faced so many obstacles um i think i'd probably have to put that at the top yeah mine is glengarry glenn ross 
Ah, oh, great movie too. Dude, yeah. oh man, I haven't seen that in so long. It's such a real movie. It's so real. Yeah. No glitz, no glamour. Yeah. Real deal, right? Yeah. 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 Al Pacino yeah. at his best. One of his best, anyways. There's too many to say at his best. Uh, I gotta I say, if I could just say that, he's got like a top ten. <laughs> if you yeah. want honorable mention, if you want a great salesman, uh, Ricky from the Trailer Park Boys is a great salesman. Ricky from the Trailer Park Boys. Or watch Trailer Park Boys. Watch Trailer Park Boys. He's <laughs> this guy that's got the gift of gab, and they're always in these awful situations about drugs, and they're in a trailer park. It's on Netflix. It's a great show. He's not really. It's not really a sales thing, but the way he can like manipulate people to kind of be like, "I know Jim. Jim knows me." Like, "Oh, okay, cool, man. Have a great day." You know that kind of stuff. It's great. Gab, Gab. Okay, I'm gonna look for that. Yeah, you're gonna have to send that to me. Um, Okay, so second topic, real quick. Right, pandemic being what it is. uh, You know, a lot of people are converting. Commercial industry is taking a hit. Right, a lot of people working remotely right now. What do you think is better for the future? I'd say for small businesses and businesses that are looking to scale, right? Would you say more remote, working remotely, or you know, going back into having an office and people coming into work? I think that you have to have a hybrid mentality, or you're, it's gonna it's gonna affect people a lot. I mean, I think there are key individuals that need to be in the office more than others. Um, uh, you know, for me, uh, even before this, I was in the offices on Mondays. And then the majority of the week I was on the, on the road. Mm -hmm. Um, But I mean, I think it's just, I think you need it. I think you need that human interaction. I can't, I can't see an entire company more than like 12 to 15 people being able to utilize zoom all the time. I mean, you just need to see people, you know, uh, water cooler talk is fun. (laughs) What's going on. It's good to bullshit with the people that you work with. I mean, right. We do a nice job. We have meetings every month, every every morning at eight thirty, and that's been great. And we've been way more connected than ever. But you know, there's just more to it. Of you know, hey, you got a second? Hey, you see that email I sent you? You know, yeah. th- those days are that kind of stuff is important. And and you know, a- accountability is really the new currency at this point right now, right? Uh-huh. And you know, I feel like if your company is not run well, it's going to really affect your culture immensely. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Tyler? What do you think? I love part that you just said the accountability right there. Cause I actually, in my sales meeting, I do a Monday sales meeting in my sales meeting. I went over accountability. <laughs> um, so that, that's funny that you just said that. Um, but um, in my, I mean, as you can guess, I said, told you before we started this, that I've been back since end of May, early yeah. June. Yeah. And then I brought back everybody in July. Um, so as a business owner, I, it, we need to be in person. Um, you know, I get it. We can do everything that we do here yeah. online because that's mostly everybody. I mean, I, if you need a quote, I can go on a website and I'll get you an insurance quote. Yeah. Um, I, insurance isn't done in person anymore. It's all over the phone, email. Quotes are done online. Everything's done on a computer. Yeah. Um, but just like Ryan said, like having that, you know, water cooler talk how was your weekend dude like you can't have that really when you're doing a zoom like zoom yeah. is to the point as much as it can be because you got a hard stop at 10 30 yeah <laughs> you know yeah. like yeah. it has to be because if not you got me talking to harb you got you talking to this person right. you can't do it. so um being in person and having that water cooler talk having that culture because we take really, we take pride in our culture yeah. um, because we're such a young, a young company. And um, we only have on the insurance side, five employees. Right. Um, it's so critical um, because I've been in situations where we've had a bad egg and it just decimated our company. And yeah. um, culture is so, so critical and you can only build that in person because if not, you know, you don't really know what's going on on that other side of the computer. Yeah. Um, yeah. And again, as a business owner, like I, maybe it's just I'm controlling or I don't know, but I, I need to know what's happening with everybody. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's a lot easier to just walk outside of my office and, hey, what's going on? And, you know, than it is to call them or to Zoom them or to do any of that. Yeah. I think you're both right. I think uh, I I agree with both of you. Not even that you're right, but I agree with both of you, right? I think we do need to have that company culture um, or just culture, generally speaking, just culture, right? And it's hard to do that virtually. 
And that's a big topic of discussion right now. I think on like corporate, even on LinkedIn is like super huge, creating your company culture virtually. I'm like, no, that doesn't exist. No. It doesn't exist at all. It's never going to happen. It's just a nice high, it's a nice hashtag. I mean, what do you do when it's somebody's mm-hmm. birthday and, you know, and, and you come on your desk because people came in a half hour early and there's yeah. balloons and shit on your desk. And yeah. hey, you know, like I had my anniversary like the last week of March for the company yeah. and it was like, sorry like, and it wasn't on purpose it was just <laughs> right? like nobody nobody was like around nobody. to do anything and yeah. you know it's it's those things that make like hey it's gorgeous outside just so you know everybody we're doing a barbecue today come on out yeah culture. you know like that stuff is is gone that's culture i'm following um i'm following salesforce and i'm trying to see what they're doing because they went completely remote so i want to microsoft know, follow, too yeah i want to follow what? more of what they're doing because i want to see how they're able to continue to be productive and effective right and efficient even right being completely you can imagine online. working at salesforce and having to use salesforce to like its maximum capacity <laughs> right. so insane. no thank you yeah let's let's get to your guys's uh your bottom line right that reoccurring truth for both of you right uh what is that for you that no matter what no matter what setback happens you go back to this truth it serves as an anchor for you it serves as rocket fuel to propel you forward what is that for you okay that's how you can go <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> That's a tricky question. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'm going to answer this right or not, but um, when I have a setback and everything, I mean, I like I was saying previously in one of the first questions you asked, like, I try to be a good person at the end of the day and help people. Right. And, I, you know, I just feel like if I'm helping as many people as I can grow their business, it's going to return, they're going to return the favor. Someone's going to return the favor Uh and it's going to help grow my business. Right. Um, As opposed to being like that cutthroat guy. It's like, Oh, don't use this. Like I'll go to an event and there's, and hard news. There's other, I I already know what you're going to say. And I totally agree with you. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, there's other insurance people in our group and I'm friends with them. Like, you know, you can do the same thing as there's so many, so much. Yeah. So many people out there that why am I going to fight another person just because he does the same thing as me? Um, yeah. so, you know, in my mind, it's like being the best person that I can be, um, to others. And, um, it's going to, it's going to pay off in dividends at some point. Amen. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. What about you, Ryan? I'm curious, man. Cause you're <laughs> this guy here. <laughs> He's got a lot. You got a lot, right? I mean, I, I think, I think part of it is, is, you know, it's understanding that there's a lot to go around. Yeah. Right. And, and that's a, and that's a big part of it. And I think, People are like, oh, I, I can't work with this guy. I can't hang out with this person because they do the same thing that I do. And because they do the same thing that I do, then I can't do anything with that person or I can't be involved in anything that's going on. So, you know, I, I live my life by a lot of a lot of mantras, right? But, you know, the, the first is liars never win and winners never lie. Love and that it. is the biggest thing, right? You know, the other thing that you're going to get caught up into a lot too, and this is where Tyler and I shine, I think is like, don't talk shit on anybody because everybody knows everyone yeah. and they're going to die me out and say they heard it from you. <laughs> and it's not because you, you don't, like, I just, there's no reason for me to, to, to talk ill of anybody, right. Right? right? And I think the other thing too is, is it's not that hard to be a good person. Right. And that's what it is. Yeah. You know, the, the, I, you know, I've been with, been with Clearbridge for over a year and a half now, you know, and the first eight months I didn't sell anything hmm. because I was developing relationships. I was educating people on what I was doing and it all comes back to that culture element. I mean, our culture is great. Um, my team understands what I, what I'm doing and every month it gets better because there's more things growing, yeah. you know, harness those relationships and understand that each each person has their core six, right? So what does that look like? Who are the six people that are involved in every transaction that you have, okay, that are reciprocal to your end product? And who are those six people that are not just business people, but are your friends as well? And that are also keeping you always top of mind. And once you develop those people, as well as putting your message out there, staying relevant, and literally developing that, that reputation of that you're a good person. It just takes time. Yeah. Crock pot, baby. It's the name of the game. Love it. You guys are so consistent, man. I like the fact that you mentioned, and this is like too, I like the fact that both of you mentioned there is no glitz, there's no glamour. Um, Tyler, you're not competitive at all. You're just very creative and you're personable, you're relational, and you're not threatened by anybody else's success, right? So you're just at the end of the day. Congratulate. What's that? (laughs) I said I congratulate him, you know? 
if the guy, if we're talking business, I'm talking to an insurance agent. And he's like, yeah, I just did whatever, 300 policies. I'm like, dude, awesome job. Crushing yeah. it. Yeah, crushing it. Like, why would I be mad about that? <laughs> that goes right back to the, you know, I'm thinking about, as I'm listening to you talk, Tyler, I, I listen, I think about my eight-year-old son, right? And I say all the time, the golden rule, what's the golden rule? And he repeats it back to me, treat people the way I want to be treated. You know what I mean? And that's like, he's eight. So he yeah. gets it. But then we kind of lose that as we kind of like become adults, right? Oh, that's adorable. Hi, June. <laughs> yeah. She only wants to cuddle when I'm on Zoom calls. Yeah. <laughs> he runs the show. That's what she's saying. This is my yeah. house, right? Yeah. <laughs> Always. Yeah. And Ryan, you're, I can see why the two of you guys get along so well and why you guys work so well because you have these mantras that you live by. And it's like you live by these mantras, like, right? So there's no reason to throw shit on anybody's name because you already know what it is, right? You already know that you, you got your space and everybody around you is wondering when you're not around. Where's Harv, right? So, Dude, baby. It's the name yeah, of the game. Man. Yeah, I appreciate you guys taking the time. You know what? I learned a lot from both of you. I really did. And um, I can't wait to blast this out because um, I think it's uh, – this is jewels, man. You guys both drop jewels. <laughs> Great. Love to hear that. It's jewels, man. Definitely. Any last words for the people? No. Uh, no. Uh, I, I would say my last thing is remember when you educate people on what you do by building that network, you're never going to have to sell anything. There it is. Yeah. Boom. I'll leave that with Ryan. This is great. <laughs> Definitely. I'd love to have you guys back at some point. We're going to have to work that out, right? This was great. This is the Bottom Line Podcast, ladies and gentlemen, today with Ryan and Tyler. Uh, look them up. Where do people find you guys? Where do people find you, Tyler? Where do people find you, Ryan? Yeah, so um, you can just search either my company or my name right on Facebook, Tyler Ardrin. You'll see it right here down in the Zoom. Um, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, you, you'll be able to get me right off there. Okay. Ryan. Yeah, so uh, Ryan Harbinson on LinkedIn. Uh, where's Harb on Instagram uh, and on Facebook as well? All right, this was great. Thanks for taking the time again, guys. This was the Bottom Line Podcast where we say what we mean and we mean what we say. <laughs> Yep. At the core of everything that is, was, and forever will be, there will always be the bottom line. Let's go.